Yeah, okay, now try shaking it. Should should shake. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yay! You did it! <laughs> and it's a little bit crackly on top. This is not gonna win any beauty I think contest. Your next one perfect. <laughs> there will be a next one too, because there's <laughs> a lot of batter left. <laughs> What you see here is a French pancake, a light, delicate French crepe. How to sauce them, how to serve them, how to make them, and how to flip them. We're going to do them today on The French Chef. <laughs> Traverso, and I'm so happy to be back with you for another episode of GBH's You and Julia at Home. We continue to be spending more time at home these days, and what better way to enjoy our time than with Julia? Today we're going to be making her crepes recipe, which is personally so exciting for me because Julia's mushroom-filled crepes were the first dish of hers that I ever made. I was 16, and my friends and I thought it was the height of sophistication to have a fancy dinner party, words. And I opened up my mom's copy of Master in the Art of French Cooking, and I saw this recipe for mushroom crepes. It sounded delicious, it sounded doable. So I'm gonna be making that dish for you, but I'm also gonna be making a fun take on a New England lobster roll crepe style. So let's get started. I'm going to first make my crepe batter. It's such an easy recipe, it's just a few ingredients. It's just water, flour, milk, eggs, and butter, and a little bit of salt. And you just kind of mix it all together in a blender. So I've got a cup each of milk and water, and that goes in. And one cup of water. You always use milk and water because that makes for a much thinner pancake. Okay, and then we're gonna put in four eggs. And I love the way Julia does two eggs at a time. I'm gonna do the same thing. Makes it faster. Whoops, <laughs> that was a little messy. <laughs> but Julia would just say, keep going, don't apologize. It's worth taking a little mesh sieve or a sifter and just sifting it directly into your measuring cup. So this is two cups of sifted flour. I've got four tablespoons of salted butter going in here that I melted. And finally, a half teaspoon of salt. Okay, so now I'm just going to blend this together for about a minute, and then I'm going to scrape down the sides and blend it a little more. Okay, so now I want to, I've taken off the lid of my uh, blending jar, and I just am going to scrape any flour that's sticking to the sides, and give it another 30 seconds or so. Always start slow and work up. If you want nice, thin crepes, it is worth letting the batter rest, so do whatever works for you. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. My pan feels hot, my batter's ready. I'm gonna pour it in and then I'm gonna swirl it around to kind of coat the bottom of the pan. I like that sizzle. I'm gonna just now swirl. I just wanna get a nice round crepe. Always tricky to get it perfectly even, but that's fairly close. I can always trim off this little bit here. There we go. That's pretty close to round. I kind of want to see a little bit of curling up around the edges, which I'm just starting to see. You should see some little bubbles in there. You usually do. And then anyway, you will see a little browning around the edges here, and that will show that it's done. This is where you can flip it, like this. Oops, I flipped it all, I did a 360. But as soon as you get the movement, it goes over very easily. So I'm making two fillings for you today. One is lobster, and it's gonna be sort of a take on a lobster roll. And Julia and I both love crepes because you can fill them with anything and you can fill them with whatever's in your fridge. But I wanted this to be a little bit special for you, which is why I'm doing lobster. This is actually frozen lobster meat, and it's perfectly good for these crepes. The style of lobster roll that I'm gonna be doing is completely inspired by a wonderful restaurant in Portland and Boston called Eventide. They do something called the brown butter lobster roll, and they have a really fun technique for getting this wonderful nutty brown butter flavor, and I wanna share that with you. So you start out with a stick of butter and a pound of lobster meat. 
So here's my butter. And what they do, and I love this, is to every stick of butter, they add two tablespoons of powdered milk because that adds more of the uh, milk compounds, the kind of uh, milk proteins and things that actually brown when you brown butter. So you just have like a more intense brown butter experience and the flavor is so good. I'm gonna add these, this uh, powdered milk, just bought it at the supermarket, super easy. And I'm gonna use a whisk to just kind of work that in. So it melts into the butter. And we're gonna let that heat up. So now the fat is kind of bubbling on the top. The milk solids are sinking to the bottom where they're gonna to start to caramelize. And when I feel like I've got it to that kind of walnut color and I get a nice toasty smell, I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm gonna pour it into the bowl. Now, first thing I wanna do is uh, squeeze a little bit of lemon into my butter. It just adds a little bit of acidity to balance out the richness about a tablespoon or so. I'm just gonna whisk that together. And I'm also gonna add a pinch of salt. So now it's pretty clean. I'm gonna put the milk, and I'm oh, sorry, the butter and uh, lemon mixture back in. Okay, with a little bit of the milk still, because that tastes great. And I'm gonna add my, my lobster. Now, I cannot overemphasize how easy it is to overcook lobster. So. You really just want to do this until it cooks through. And that goes in. And if you were doing a, a lobster thermidor, you'd start out just the same way of cooking your lobster meat slowly in butter. And that brings out the pink color in it and also gives it a lovely flavor. So now I'm going to make my take on Julia's mushroom filling. Now I should say that when Julia made this dish, she did it as a gateau. So I, I'm skipping that and I'm gonna do it slightly differently, but I'm still kind of sticking pretty close to her approach. So we start with a little bit of butter and oil in a pan and we're just gonna cook some aromatics um, like shallots and something oniony. So I have actually a mixture of shallots and scallion. You can do either or or both. If you want a little bit of garlic, you can certainly do that. So I'm gonna add this to the pan and just let these soften for four or five minutes at most, maybe three minutes. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt too. And now I'm just adding four ounces of very finely chopped mushrooms. I like them to be finely chopped because they almost melt into the sauce. They aren't gonna add a lot of texture, but they just add a lot of flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. And now they're just cooking down to a really nice, soft, delicious mix. Here's my filling, it's just the mushrooms with this cream cheese that I've softened. And that is all there is to this filling. It couldn't be easier. So now that I have my two fillings ready, let's start making some crepes. And now I'm going to ask my husband, Scott, to come in and help me roll these crepes. There are a couple ways to fold crepes. And I'm gonna, let's do the mushroom first. And I want to just show you the rolling method. Okay, so I just fold it over and just roll it up like a rug. So that's one way to do it. And now Julia would then um, cover this, put it in a casserole dish with some like white sauce over it, some cheese. To me, that's almost like too much of a good thing. So I would just garnish this with like some fresh herbs, some parsley. Just a nice, simple, if you wanted, you could put a little more butter, but honestly, I'm, I'm happy this way. This is a pretty rich dish. So, all right, so I'm gonna put some lobster meat in the corner in like, one, if you picture this as four quadrants, so just put it in the top left, whatever quadrant. You okay, want. yeah, this is, I would call this like 75% to 100 quadrant on a pie chart. <laughs> if this were a pie chart. All right, so you fold up and then you just fold over to the left so you get a little triangle of deliciousness. And I would almost treat it like a cone, so I'm gonna put a little bit of chive in there. I have not tasted this mushroom filling since I was a teenager, 
And so this is gonna bring back some really nice memories. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. It's very creamy without being mm. too creamy. This is so good, just as it is. It's lighter. It's so satisfying though, and it's like rich and wonderful. Oh, I'm excited about this lobster. Mmm. Yeah, the lobster crepe is fantastic. Can you taste that like brown butter kind of vibe? Totally can. The lobster can taste great. This is so good. Do you have a preference between the two? I would eat the lobster crepe all day long. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, you would have to pry the plate away from my hands. Mm -hmm. I would too, but boy, this mushroom filling is not only truly legit delicious, but it really brings back very happy memories. So that's my take on Julia Child's French crepes. Now, if you've been following along with these recipes over the past few months, I would love to hear from you. What dishes would you like to see me make in this series? I welcome your feedback, so be sure to let me know on any of GBH's social media platforms. And remember, wherever you are, as Julia always said, there's no end to imagination in the kitchen.